This demo is going to be uh, for NetSuite on the clients and customers side. Uh, so it would go all the way from creating a client or a customer to creating, uh, accepting payments from this customer. So we'll start off by going to lists uh, and then relationships and we'll go to clients. This could also say customers depending on your account. And we're going to, going to collect new. Uh, this allows us to create a new customer. So we're going to call this the Home Depot and it's, just, it's going to be set to closed one. Uh, let's go ahead and give this customer a phone number. Just a generic phone number. And we'll give them an email address as well. All right. We could add in a territory if we wanted to or a lead source. Uh, depending on, on the account. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and click financial. And here we can set up what their terms are, if they have a credit limit, what their generic price level will be. Uh, for the price level, we're going to click corporate. Uh, this will automatically set all of the items that they purchase or that you put onto a sales order or a uh, proposal. These all come in at this corporate price level. Uh, this could be, this will also be set up uh, on each of your items. So you would set up a base price on the item and then the price level would actually be um, either a markup or a markdown um, uh, percentage. So we'll, we're gonna set corporate on this price level and then we'll give them an address. And this one's, if you have, um, Look for duplicates available on your account. It'll come up and it'll say, give you a warning that this record may be a duplicate record uh, even before you're finishing uh, creating the record. So just in case you already have them set up, uh, you would be able to go into them. You'd be able to see, oh, I already have this, this customer set up. So we'll click this pencil icon here on, on the far right of the screen. And then we can enter in what their address is. Let's give them a nice address. And there it's populating it all up here. This is how it's going to look like when you try to send them something. So we'll click OK and it'll look like that. Let's switch back over to general and I'm gonna just put in my email address here just to, just to be safe. And I'm going to click save. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we'll head back out to the home screen with the little home button up here. And now we're going to create a proposal. So we'll go to transactions, sales, and prepare proposals. This could also be uh, estimates depending on your account. So we're going to select the Home Depot. So our nice new customer. The estimate number is automatically going to be set. Um, this, this, would, this number would be based on your account. You could change the numbering system. It's automatically going to put today's date and it's going to give it 30 days before it'll expire. Um, so here we'll go ahead and down here to create an item. Uh, we'll click on this two little arrows here on the item screen and then click list. And this will be all of the items that we have available to sell. So I'm going to put the Apple iPad as an item and we're going to sell 10 of them. Now the system is going to say that I only have six available uh, because I have the inventory module set up on this demo account. Really what this is saying is you could have an issue here where you're trying to create a proposal for uh, for an item that you don't have enough quantity for. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to ignore this one since it's a demo. Uh, and as you can see, the price level corporate has come over as well. So that's what we're looking for. So I'll click add and we can go down to the next line. Uh, and then we're gonna click this double arrow again and go to list. 
And now I'm going to choose this Asus tablet. And it's also going to give me the inventory warning, but I'm still going to select 10 and we're going to click add. And this will be the end of our, of our items. So now we can click save and this will create our proposal record. Now let's say we come back the next day and uh, this proposal needs to be generated into a sales order. Uh, we're going to go ahead and click sales order straight from this proposal screen and it's going to start to process us through to a sales order. Again, it'll give me a warning that my inventory levels are low. Uh, I don't have enough to fulfill this, but we're going to ignore this again. All of the information is going to come over from, from this customer. Here's their terms. They've been set up as a net 30 customer. Uh, here's our proposal. It's a, it's a field that we can't change. It's created from this proposal. Uh, you can always click there and go back to, to the last transaction. We're going to clear out this RevRec schedule. This is a different module that we have enabled on, on this demo account. Uh, if I keep going with that, it's going to create an error for me. So I'm going to, I'm going to click through that. We can go ahead and we can look through the, the billing address. We can look through the billing tab, make sure all of this is looking good, this is correct. Uh, we can go ahead and look at the shipping tab. This looks all correct. And we can go through each one of these tabs. You don't really need to on every transaction. Most of this is going to be manually, uh, manually come over. It's a system generated information, depending on your, your setup, your customer, all, all of that, for that information. So we'll go back to the items and we're just gonna click save. And this should create our sales order. And there it is. And it's going to be set to pending approval. Now, uh, let's say it's coming through from this sales rep, Brian Sullivan. He submits a sales order. It'll go to his manager for approval uh, to make sure that everything is uh, correct. Say that he's not giving them unnecessary discounts. So we're going to click approve, this little blue button approve. And then this is going to be a valid sales order. And now the next thing that we have to do because we are in a uh, inventory module uh, demo account, we have to fulfill this sales order. So we're gonna click fulfill. Uh, actually, before we do that, you can see down here uh, that, that this form has been customized. So it says hours instead of quantity. Your, your account could say quantity instead. So we're click, gonna click fulfill. And then it's just gonna pull over Here's the items that we need to fulfill. We're going to choose them both. Uh, if we had different departments, we could choose which department they're coming from. Uh, we're going to choose engineering for these two. Uh, if we have different locations that have different quantities on hand, we can choose which, which location they're coming from. Uh, this is especially in, important on the inventory modules because you can see for each location how much quantity you have on hand. So we're gonna choose San Jose for the two of them. Uh, as you can see, the on hands here, there's minus 10 in each of those uh, from a separate test. And it's 10 remaining to be fulfilled. Uh, and then here's the quantity that we're fulfilling. So I'm just gonna fulfill the, the full quantity. Uh, if we wanted to check our shipping information, here it is. Uh, we can ship through UPS or through different, more, uh, we have these shipping methods. And then you could set up, um, if you do have inventory, you could set up, um, there's like a, a way to set up UPS shipping through your NetSuite account where it'll link your UPS uh, company information to your NetSuite account and you can automatically print out shipping labels, uh, but we're going to skip that for this time. Uh, we don't have that set up on this account because it's a demo account, fake customer. But all of this shipping address is the same. Here's our nice address. And we're going to click save.
And so this one will come through as it's been picked. So we could then mark it as packed. So let's say if we have a big warehouse, first person comes through, they pull everything off the shelf, they mark it as picked. Then they put it into a nice box, they mark it as packed. You could have a different person who has to go make, come in and click mark packed. Uh, and then let's say you have a, a third person who does the shipping, then they would be able to mark it as shipped. And you could have different people um, creating all of these transactions. So now it's been shipped and now we can actually create a, an invoice. We can bill this customer. Uh, we can either do that from the item fulfillment if, uh, if we want to, or we can go back to the sales order, which we will, and we can see, okay, here's our bill remaining. So I'm going to, I'm going to bill the remaining amounts for this customer. And everything's going to come over just the way as it is on the sales order. So everything's coming through. Here's our quantity of 10 at our corporate price level. Everything's coming through exactly as it was on the sales order. So I'm just going to click save and it's going to create my invoice. Now the invoice is going to be the first transaction in this whole process that has a posting impact. Um, right down here, you can see there's a created from line which will link us back to the sales order. So I'm gonna open up the sales order in a different tab. And then I'm gonna go over here to actions and geo impact, just to kind of show you that here's this posting field and it says yes for each of these. So this is a posting transaction and I'll return to the invoice right over here. Now let's go back over to the sales order and we'll go actions again to geo impact. And this posting is no. So these three lines aren't going to post, they're just an example. Uh, so I'll go ahead and close this down because this invoice is the only thing that has a geo impact at this time. So now uh, let's say we're receiving a payment from this customer. We could either accept the payment from this invoice screen itself, or we could go to the customer uh, and may have gone a little bit quick there. Uh, right here at the client, you can actually click on the customer and it'll take us right through to the customer page. And here we can click accept payment from them. Uh, and let's go ahead and do that now. So it's automatically going to populate who our customer is. It's going to automatically populate what account we want to put it into or if we're going to put everything into undeposited funds. Um, just as it comes in, we can do that as well. Uh, here's what their balance is currently. So it's a $9,000 balance, which is our one invoice. And then down here in the line level, we can see all of the invoices that they have open. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark this invoice and it's gonna say, okay, we're gonna apply the payment. And it's, it automatically set in what the payment amount is going to be for the full amount of this invoice. Uh -huh. So if I had multiple invoices, I could click multiples and it would generate, it, it would add up to this payment amount. Or if I had a payment amount coming in for, uh, let's just do a $4,500 payment. Right? We could then apply it here and it's gonna take only the 4,500 and apply it to this single invoice. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and only create a payment for the 4,500 Again, we could put in the department class and location information if we wanted to. Uh, in this case, we don't, we don't want to. Uh, we could put a memo saying, okay, this is payment for invoice 0199, uh, and then we would save, and this will create our payment, customer payment information. So there we have it. We have successfully applied received a payment for 4,500 and applied it to this, uh, this invoice. Now, if we click this invoice down, right down here uh, from, from this screen, it should take us in to the actual invoice itself. And as you can see over here, we have the total amount was $9,000 and the amount due is only 4,500. So NetSuite itself has automatically done all the calculations and says, okay, there's only 4,500 that is left 
on this invoice. So now let's go ahead and take a look uh, at the customer again. So we're gonna go over here to client, click on them. And then up here in the left part of the screen is a little dial icon. This is called the customer dashboard. So when we click here, it's gonna take us to some nifty information. Uh, we'll have some KPIs and we'll have different uh, customer specific dashboard links. In this case, we want to see the AR aging detail for just this customer. So because we've gone to the customer dashboard, when we click this AR aging detail link here, it's gonna take us to the aging for just this customer. And here we can see that they have an invoice and the open balance is 4,500. Here's the age of the invoice, here's when it's due. All of the, all of the important information uh, that you'd like. Um, we can also change the age as of, we can change what date we're running this report on. So if we want to look further in the past or if we want to look in the future and say, okay, at the end of this month, what is going to be their aging based on transactions that are open currently. We could do that. So instead, let's go back, uh, back to the customer dashboard. Uh, and then there's a, another, um, another report that's good to see. We can do this AR payment history by payment or AR payment history by invoice. And let's click on the payment history by payment. And it's going to show me here's payment number 34, which is the one that we just created. It's a, it's a payment transaction. Uh, here's the date, here's the amount. And then here's the invoice that it actually offset. So you can see that the amount unapplied for this payment is zero because the full amount has been applied to that single invoice. Uh, if we had only applied 3000 from this payment to this invoice, uh, it would show 1500 was left over. So NetSuite is automatically doing this. It's automatically doing all the calculations, it's building these reports for you uh, generically. So that's a very nice feature within NetSuite. Uh, and that is it for the, the customer side. Thank you.